I'm assuming you came here to learn a few things about good old Dragonfly. Well, if that's the case, you came to the right place. Note that throughout the video, I'm going to have lag compensation turned on, utilizing the target lock feature, and depending on audio, or when to dodge. Let's talk about the gear that I'm currently using. First up is the walking cane, that gives a 25% speed boost, which will be used for kiting purposes. Whenever I need to switch between the cane and my weapon, I usually go for the handbat, due to the infinite durability along with the 59 damage, unless you're playing as Wendy, Wes, or a wimpy wolfgang. One question that may be asked is, how do you swap between those two on controller? For that, I use crab claw fingers. Thank you Dark Souls. I know it can be annoying to play like that, but it's the best way that I can think of to switch weapons efficiently. For crab claw hands, the thumb is moving the control stick, while the pointer is switching weapons. Up next, we got the Magi Luminescence, which I'll refer to as Amulet, paired with the most iconic duo, a stack of Nightmare Fuel. The Amulet provides you with a light radius, 2 sanity per minute, and a 20% speed boost. And to those who are wondering, no I'm not going to talk about food because I assume you carry that. Unless it heals. Now that we got the pan flute, along with the star caller staff, the pan flute has a grand total of 10 uses. Scratch that, 9 uses if you deconstruct them. The best time to use the flute is for when the dragonfly enrages. The star caller staff isn't required, but it's certainly helpful for almost any situation so you don't have to be blind during the night or have your target log cancelled due to lightning. You may notice the entire arena being covered with the cobblestone, along with the lava pools being surrounded. The cobblestone is insanely helpful due to the 30% speed boost. As for the lava pools, I surrounded them with walls so I can wander around the arena freely without having to worry about lava. Finally, we can move on to the battle. To start the fight, you can lure her till she flies away and be ready to hit her once, then dodge. For the kiting, this can be the most difficult to learn since many things can happen if you miss an attack or you're too slow. This is where audio comes in handy too. The average amount of hits you land before dodging is 5 hits or lower, 6 hits if you're on time, 7 hits if you dodge perfectly, and the connection is great. Now what exactly counts as a hit? Well to answer that, it's every time I hear a hit sound from Dragonfly, sometimes I do a fake swing as seen or heard in the footage. Don't worry too much if you can't get the hang of it yet, it takes time. Once you see Dragonfly spawning in lava, there are so many things you can do within that time. You can heal up, refuel the amulet since it runs out after 8 minutes, or catch up to her for a few hits. Let's say you're confident in attacking, what you can do with that speed is go in front of her and try to land a hit or two, depending if she got stunned for that hit. While she's near the lava pool, that's where you can land the most hits, but be careful with incoming lava and dragonfly after she spawns in the last one. If you're clever enough to remember how much lava she spawns in, then you can dodge her last hit after she spawns in the last one. But if you lost track, then get ready for this dodging method. While she's flying straight towards you, you can sidestep in a diagonal direction like this. But don't do it too late, or else she'll stop and slap you silly. During first phase, or after the enrage, you'll notice that she can delay an attack. For that, you can sidestep diagonally, or get close enough to her, while running away to make her attack miss. But don't try that while she's speedy. After you pan her successfully, there's two ways you can dodge her next attack. 
either land one hit, then dodge before she fully sleeps, or while she's sleeping, land two hits, then dodge. Let's say you forgot to bring a pan flute. Well, there's one more option. You can keep running around her arena till she turns to normal, but be careful since you don't want to stall too much due to hounds or incoming giants. Now for you controller players, let's talk about target lock. If you click the left stick or L3, you'll be locked onto that target till you unlock it or the target is in total darkness. Target is also unlocked when sorting your inventory. You'll notice throughout the footage, I take a step back every time I approach the target. Well, that's because if I attack her right off the bat, I'm gonna have a chance to miss my attacks, which nobody likes. As I've mentioned before, it's insanely useful for when fighting deer clops. Now, if you followed all that, congratulations, now show her who's boss. Please go away.